Friday Fanatics Takeover right now. <laughs> Hi! If you guys can hear us in the chat, just uh, give a big thumbs up. Testing. Or... Testing one, two. <laughs> yes. Let us know that you can see us before I start doing an intro again. It says live over here, so. Yeah. Ooh, I think we're live. My phone tells me that we're live. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for your patience. If you were trying to get on the other link, for some reason, Google Hangouts likes to give us trouble. So uh, thank you all to everybody that has made it over from the other link. And thank you, everybody, that's just watching because you, you, you signed on. <laughs> um, so this is our third episode of Friday Fanatics Takeover here on, oh, yeah, it just told me we're live. <laughs> Uh, here on Comic Book Fanatics channel. Um, we are actually going to be moving to our own channel, which is Female Fanatic Force, and there will be a link in the description bar so you guys can go and subscribe. We will still be doing weekly chats, and we're just going to have a different platform. Um, Marty has totally supported us in this. This is not like a messy divorce. He is very happy for us and has always supported us moving to our own channel. So uh, very exciting. Next week will be new, and we have some fun things to show you guys for Yay. our new channel next week. <laughs> so, yeah. Welcome, everybody. So I think that maybe we'll go ahead and go through and introduce everybody just... Uh, for those of you who may not have tuned in, um, just maybe share your name, your channel, and I don't know, maybe what you had for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm Chesk. Oh. <laughs> we should we should get this down by now. <laughs> you just need to go in the order. Figure out an alphabet order. order and all but half of us start with A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a M before A N. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, real quick while we're waiting to see who goes first, I just want to say that we, um, if you guys have been watching, you probably noticed that Millie is not here with us today, but she is in the chat. She is having um, a really bad uh, tooth, tooth issues, so um, we miss you, Millie, but we're so happy that you're in the chat, so we want to hear all of your thoughts and stuff, too, so blow up the chat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I can go. Hi, my name is Amanda. Uh, my YouTube is Nerdy Girl Collections. Uh, same with my Instagram. And what I had for dinner was a garbage plate. <laughs> what is a garbage plate? What's a garbage plate? That needs explaining. Oh, okay. So in New York, we have these things called garbage plates where it's pretty much like mac, uh, mac salad and home fries. And then on top of it, you can get like a hot dog or a hamburger. And then you can put like meat sauce or ketchup. It's like really fattening and greasy and disgusting, but so good at the same time. That sounds really good. <laughs> so is that you, Cheska? No, I'm like I think I'm. No, actually, I think Mercy. No, Millie would be last if she were here. No, I think if we're gonna go in alphabetical order, then Andrea would be next. Oh, is it me? Okay. I'm Andrea. <laughs> Also known as nerd lore, also known as Southern as hell. <laughs> um, I can be found at uh, nerd lore on YouTube and twi uh, not Twitter. What am I talking about? Instagram. And I had uh, Chick Fil A fries and a yogurt parfait and coffee for dinner, and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think that's me then. So, yes. um, hi, I'm Celia. My channel is Funkmaster Celia. Uh, Twitter is Funkmaster Celia, and Instagram. So you can find me everywhere as Funkmaster Celia. In the streets, online. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, for dinner, I had some Kung Fu Panda Three fruit snacks and a bag of spicy nacho Doritos. A little bag, <laughs> not a huge bag. Just wanna, but I, I plan to have real dinner after we get done. <laughs> Preach it, girl. Me too. 
so guys, hello. I'm Francesca, also known as the Cheska on the Twitterverse. Um, my YouTube channel's my name, Francesca. Uh, Bologna, also spelled like baloney from the Oscar Mayer song. Um, <laughs> I, like Celia, have not yet eaten dinner because we're lucky and it's only 6.40 here. But I am super sick, so I apologize in advance because I may be muting myself for, you know, random coughing fits. But I'm having tea, so that's going to be my temporary dinner right now. And Millie, you feel better. I feel your your pain. As someone who had braces for a very long time, I feel your pain. Aww. So, I guess I'm next. Yay! Alright, guys. Hey, guys. It's Mercy from Mercy's Little Show. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Mercy's Little Show. Also, it's Mercy's Little Show on Instagram. And then on Twitter, it's Mercy's Little Show, no W. And what I had for dinner is I had a salad. Oh, girl. Got <laughs> you know, French dressing. And, and the Hulk is, um, you know, with me today. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you all healthy and stuff, and the rest of us are eating crap. Aren't you, wait, aren't you pregnant? <laughs> Should it be you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have never been pregnant, but I hope if I, you know, if I do become pregnant, I will not be eating salads. I hope my cravings make me, like, eat Jack in the Box and in and out daily. <laughs> well, like, I have the cravings for, like, cucumbers and ranch, but I was like, I have a craving for salad. And my husband's like, okay, here, let's put this together. <laughs> it's not <laughs> cute. <laughs> I think that you should, like, do a little spin in your Wonder Woman pajamas, Mercy. She's so cute. That is, like, the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. A Wonder Baby in the oven. Tiara. Where's your Minnesota accent, Celia? Oh, oh my gosh, is that Marty? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out what the uh, next thing is on our agenda. So I think we're going to talk about how we men eat this week. So uh, what have you guys been up to, you girls? <laughs> <laughs> Marty has a thing for Wisconsin girls. I don't know. <laughs> Minnesota, Marty. Minnesota. I thought it was Minnesota, Minnesota mingles. Minnesota. We need Minnesota. to find them up or something yeah. like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I, I actually went to a con on Sunday. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it was like, it, it reminded me of just like a flea market for comic books. Like it was, it was inside of a Hilton. It was only 30 minutes away, so it's not, and it was like $6 to get in. So it was totally worth it just to go and just see some people. Um, but it was called East Bay Comic Con. And honestly, the real reason I went um, was that there was a creator there that I wanted to have sign one of my books. And that was, I have it right here, <clears throat> um, Matt Hawkins. So he created, like, the Aphrodite, or he writes the Aphrodite series. So <laughs> and he was, like, right when I walked in. So it was really cool because... He signed it. He put, hey, Francesca, thanks for reading. And then he also gave me a free uh, free first issue of his new comic called Symmetry. I have no oh, idea cool. what it's about, but he signed That's it. Awesome. Yeah, but I didn't really buy anything. I was hoping that they'd have some stuff just to, you know, just to say, you know, I supported the con and bot. But it was a lot of, of, of single issues, like, you know, um, Bronze Age, Silver Age. Um, some like new modern stuff, but they were, and as it is, like at every single con, they were so overpriced that it just wasn't, and they like wouldn't budge at all. Um, they had like an Edge of Spider Verse for the first appearance of Gwen Stacy that I wanted, and it turned out that it was like the Spanish edition or the Mexican edition, and I'm like, I'm not paying like a hundred dollars for this. I'm sorry, like it's not even the English like variant. No, I don't want this. So, um, yeah, that was my Sunday. It was cool. Uh, well, I had I thought I was gonna have a really awesome night last night, and it was like poop city. I was <laughs> so I won tickets on Instagram for Emerald City Comic Con. They were like, "Hey, answer this trivia question, and um, we're gonna pick ten people." So I 
got, I won. I was like, oh my gosh, I never won anything. I'm so excited. <laughs> and so my husband and I, like, he's, he's really excited about this movie, and he's not into comic books at all. So it was, like, cool that it was finally a movie that him and I could both go and see. And um, so we got sitters. We have three kids. Getting sitters for three kids in one night is like winning the freaking Powerball. Like, it is so <laughs> difficult. And then we had to drive like an hour to the to the the place. So we print out our passes. We get there like an hour and 15 minutes early, and there's a huge line. And we get to the end of the line, and the lady comes up with her clipboard and is like, sorry, we overbooked this, so you guys aren't going to be able to see the movie. I'm like, what? So we didn't get to see the movie. I was so wow. mad. We like sat in a bar in the mall, and I gave dirty looks to every single one of those men that went in and saw that movie. I was like, "You have got to be kidding me!" And then they were like trying to. They were like, "Well, we have tickets for another premiere," and I'm like, "Well, what is it? Not Deadpool. It's like this zoo mania. I don't know, some zoo movie. It's some other garbage." I was like, "Get that out of my face!" <laughs> Horrible. It would have been awesome so bad. if we saw it because we could have heard, you know, had a sneak preview through you. So. I know. And I was like, I went to Target earlier and I was like, oh, I'm going to get a Deadpool beanie. And I'm going to wear it. And I was like all excited. <laughs> I was going to wear like my Deadpool shirt. I'm so glad I didn't because I would have looked like a it would have been so sad. I would have been like a kid with a balloon waiting outside of the Ferris wheel that I couldn't ride on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I was I was so I was so devastated and but there was a lot of people and the worst part is this kid in front of me probably like 12 years old oh he was crying it was sad like not like bawling but he was like they they said we couldn't go in either and and I, they offered a ticket but it's not even for Deadpool <laughs> so, I was like, how could you do this to this poor kid oh, so boo that was sad I didn't really win. Slap in the face. So wrong. The rest of the week was pretty good, though. <laughs> I never have really eventful weeks. <laughs> I stay at home all the time and take care of a zoo of animals and children. <laughs> That's not bad, like, you know, life either. Animals are cool. The hell out of my week is going to the comic book store. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave this house and be in the sunlight. <laughs> I'm going to blonde everybody because I'm so white because I never see the outside, but let's go. <laughs> you know what's fun about, like, sometimes I like to go to comics, on comic book stores just to, I know it sucks and like, they hate it, but I just love being in a comic book store. Like, yeah. there's just something relaxing, like, about just, like, being in that environment. I don't just know. Just like, oh, I'm with my people surrounded yeah. by comics. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's a really, if you know, if there's anyone that's watching that's from the Bay Area, there's um, a really, like, it's probably my favorite comic book store um, that I've been to, and it's called A1 Comics, and it's in Sacramento, and they have two of them, and they are, like, <laughs> there's no, they're so pretty, like, they have everything, they have, like, all new comics, they have long boxes of you know older comics, they have statues, sideshow stuff, a hell of trades, I mean, it's... Like, those are definitely my favorite stores to go to because I really feel like... And they have, like, you know, things like deck... Um, card, you know, decks of cards for people that play uh, Magic and, you know, I don't know if people still play Yu-Gi-Oh, but all that kind of stuff. So, it's kind of cool. I, uh, I, I went there because then when we, we left within, like, an hour and a half of that con, so we're like, what are we going to do now? So... My fiance was like, do you want to do anything else? I'm like, well, if we go out towards this area, towards this comic book store, we can go to the casino. So we did that, too, actually. We went to the casino after. <laughs> Love the casino. <laughs> I like going to mine, too, because it's in the downtown area of, like, everything. So if you wanted to make a day of it, you could just, like, walk around all the, like, cool little local shops downtown. And um, my comic book store has tables set out for people to play Warhammer and Magic. And they've actually got the building next to it. I think the guy that owns the comic book store has the building next to it. So if you go on, like, a Friday or Saturday, there's people, like, all in there playing Magic and playing Warhammer. And it's really cool. And I like the name of my comic book store, too. It's called the Dragon Quill, which I think what? is... What? That's cool. I know. That's cool. We need to move to Alabama, guys. 
God, yeah, y'all don't want to come hang out with me. <laughs> I'm always so jealous of hearing about people's comic book shops that, like, do stuff. Because my comic book shop never has, like, any events. They close at 7 o'clock every single night. And it's like, you know, there's no magic going on. No proverbial magic or, like, magic the gathering. It's just... <laughs> It's just well, so the one that I my like local one doesn't have that stuff either. That <laughs> this was an hour and like an hour out, so you know yeah. don't feel bad. Well, I like the I like my local shop. I think that the people that run it are like really awesome, and they try to do stuff with like um they're just really small. Like they only have three employees. Oh, wow. So I just think that they're kind of limited on their their time and stuff. Um. And I think that the location they're in is pretty expensive because it's right next to a really big mall. So I'm amazed that they've been able to stay open for as long as they have. But they do stuff for, like, free comic book day and, like, you know, they're, it's just not huge. So. Yeah, ours yeah. is open until, like, 11. Why? Yeah. Why not me? 7 o'clock? I'm like, what the heck? Mine's open until get... 7, too, yeah. 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 Shop that I that I went to the other day that's closed at seven, but he opens up at like nine or something like that. They don't even open until eleven. I'm like, what? I want a job there because then I know that I can have a life afterwards. You know? Eleven to seven is perfect. <laughs> like, I'm do you guys? Sleeping. For those that buy like the physical, do you guys have a discount if you guys have a pull list? Like, does your um, mm -hmm. comic book shop offer a discount? Yeah, I think mine's like ten percent off. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. What? I am moving to Alabama. I don't get no no discounts. Ours so. is thirty if you get over like twenty books a week. That's a lot of books a week. Yeah. Well, that no, but that's that's. I was gonna like rant about this. I you know it feels bad, but because we want to support the comic book in industry, but you hear about so many of these stores like you know Amanda and Andrews that offer even something that's like ten percent. I mean that adds up. Like, I don't mind having this, and this is one of the things, when I had a pool list at, at a comic book shop, and I was pulling, like, 40, 50 titles, like, a month. I mean, that's a pretty significant amount, and I asked them after I found out other people were, I'm like, do you guys offer a discount if I have, like, a pool list, or if I have something that I will pick up? And they're like, no, his, like, actual answer was something like, I was like, do you offer a discount? He's like, no, we just offer good service, and I'm like, what? <laughs> cheeky, cheeky yeah, bastard. Right? And I'm like, what the <laughs> that was seriously his answer, and I'm like, okay. And then I ended up, like, there was a bunch of stuff, and I ended up moving, and I couldn't go there, and then I moved back, but I, at that point, it was digital. But even, like, when I went to the store, and I uh, I bought a bunch of trades that I couldn't get online, and they're, like, out of print, and even something like this, I asked them, I'm like, if you buy over a certain amount of trades, do you guys offer um, any kind of a discount? Like, do you guys, you know, 10, 20% off cover? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, so this is also part of the reason why people are finding it harder to buy things at stores, because you can go online, not just, like, Amazon, but... I buy a ton of stuff off of, like, in-stock trades. They offer 40 to 50% off everything. Yeah. And I'm like, if this company can offer to do this, how can you guys, like, it's good service. Even something small, like 10%, like, that means a lot to me, and that would make me want to support you more and come and support my local shop. My mm -hmm. shop, when I went in, they gave me a free comic book. Like, they, I swear, they probably spent, like, 30 or 45 minutes with me, like, walking me through the books and, like, letting me look at everything. Um, and they gave me a free comic. There, he was like, "Here, you can try this one for free, just on us." After I had That's bought so some nice. comics, it was really nice. They, the only thing that they do is like you have to have at least ten dollars worth of pulls. Um, to have a pull list, but I don't think that's unreasonable. And um, I know that my guys had said that a lot of the time people will get a pull list and they'll like order all these books and then they never see them again. So I don't know if that's a comic common occurrence, and that might be why some comic book shops are like, eh. But still, I think if, especially if somebody's like come in and come in and, and they're getting like that many titles, they should there should be something. Well, yeah. see, that's the same thing with me. I, when I was doing, cause I, um, well, before Wednesday, I always ordered my comics from Midtown, and they're located up in New York. And every like, I would spend at least forty dollars, maybe fifty on, like, for, for a week of comics, you know? And they ordered, like, a discount for me, like, 10%, I believe. But it just depends on how much I order. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that, like, that, you know, each comic, it's, they're not, like, chains, you know? It's just an individual shop owner, and I understand that it's, like, difficult to, like, offer that kind of thing, but I would think that the money that you would bring in from somebody that was 
you know, consistently doing a pull list. Like, I think I saw somebody mention in the comments that they have, like, a punch card, which I feel like that is a good idea because yeah. they're still oh, getting yeah. that investment, you know? Like, they're having somebody that's purchasing regularly. But mine doesn't even offer, like, something like that. Maybe I should just mention it to them. Like, hey, you guys should get a punch card because, <laughs> you know, I spend, like, I don't, it's, like, I spend consistently about 30 to thirty to $35 a week um, really trying to get it down to 25 <laughs> but. You know, and if honestly, if I save money on um, the comic books, I would be putting it back into comic books more likely yeah. than not, you know, because there's titles that are yeah. like not in my primary, but something I might be interested in picking up. And if I got a discount, I would be more inclined to spend it there than to not, you know. Any kind of little incentive. I just think it makes, and, and just when you hear of other people getting it, you know, it's just. Why can't? Why do they offer it? But then, like, you can't. That's just kind of. And some of these are like in California, and like within within my range. Um, yeah. it's just it, that, that's just the only thing. It's just a little bit like I understand. Someone says you know local shops have more overhead than online stores. I completely get that, which is why I'm not expecting to go into that store and get forty percent off of this product. But like I said, if I'm buying six trays that are twenty dollars each, and I and and you know I bring up a question like that, like. You would make me, you know, I would be just more inclined to shop there and get more things if you're like, you know what, yeah, like, I can give you 10% off of this. Like, I'm still going to buy the books, honestly, but I'm going to also recommend other people to go and, you know, like, this person was great. Like, this this place was, was really mm -hmm. friendly and they offer a discount if you buy a certain amount of books. Yeah, because I, I would send, like, anybody into my store because I've had nothing but good um experience and like every time I go in there they're so nice and they always know that I'm lugging around my eight month old so they're like they're really helpful so I, uh, I mean I would probably be if you if you go in and invest invest that much money in a business and they're just like we give you good service like that's just kind of like really <laughs> that, no, I swear to god that's that was literally the response that I got when I asked that I was just oh okay like <laughs> It's a comic shop about three hours away from me. The, the first time that I went in there, if you spend over a certain amount, you get, I, I don't remember what they're called, but they're like comic dollars. You can use that towards your bill if you wanted to. You can use it for anything. If you spend... So there, it's kind of like a coupon, but they're they're a dollar. Like, yeah. That's cool. Hmm. I mean, I think it's like a dollar for every ten dollars, and then it's just like a little green card, and you can use it as money too. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, at least it's something. Right. Oh, I was just thinking. Oh, Francesca, you're muted, but maybe she's having a coughing. Yeah. Fit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was chewing the rest of my uh my cough tab. Sorry, guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to go off on that rant. Like, I feel bad because, you know, none of us would honestly be here if it wasn't for comics, I if it wasn't also for comic book stores, but it's just interesting to see all the places in the world, and it's surprising that the person that lives in the South, like, or you wouldn't, like, I, and you probably have less comic book stores in Alabama than we do in some of our major cities. I mean, I'm in California, oh, yeah. um, you know, New York, uh, you're in Oregon, right, Celia? No, I'm in Washington. Washington. Okay, well, Seattle, so, like, that's where they have a, a lot of the major things. You would think, like, we would have, you know, you'd hear that more from us, but it's interesting that it's the southern hometown. <laughs> that southern hospitality. <laughs> yeah, that's totally taking care of you. Like, I think that's awesome. It is. It's really nice, especially, like, when you're first going in there and you're like, I know nothing, and they're like, here, <laughs> we will help you. <laughs> and now I feel like I just I look forward to going every time because I'm just like, I'm going to go and look at all the things. And I don't, I don't ever feel uncomfortable in my shop, which is really important, too. Yeah, I, my, everybody in our shop, my shop is really friendly. It's just, you know. That's what they're offering. Good service. Good <laughs> service. That's what I get. I get the I get the good service, but it is nice. I mean, like I would rather buy my books from them than online most of the time because one, I don't have to wait, and then mm -hmm. two, I mean, if I call, like they know, they like know me, <laughs> like by my voice or whatever. They're like, oh hey Celia, oh yeah, we'll put that in your poll, or we, <laughs> we saw this book and thought you might want it. And um, well, have you guys ever heard of DCB service? Yeah, that's um Oddsolo. He does. Yeah. Isn't that where he gets his books from? I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I, I've 
That's what he's mentioned is his round table. But and he gets them like on Fridays, I think. Mm-hmm. Cause, well, you can elect, so you can do it. I've ordered some stuff from them when I've ordered like statues, and you can elect to have it shipped weekly, every like every two weeks, monthly, like on a certain day. Like they have a lot of different options for that. But um, it's kind of like Midtown because I think Midtown does that too. But I think that they're less expensive. You just have to pre-order way in advance. Yeah, they they, have... that's what I noticed. Is you have to order so so early in advance, and the it would be really hard to, like, because sometimes I forget about stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, I want to get it last minute, so. But, How yeah. are your guys' comic book shops decorated? With comics. <laughs> <laughs> Mine well, is like, just boxes like, everywhere. And and, uh, mine's just, like, covered in posters and stuff. Same with ours, really too. It's like a big Spider-Man hanging in that corner. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, mine doesn't have any props. There's, like, you walk in, and there's, like, it's kind of small, but there's, like, um, the long boxes on the sides, like, on, up against the walls, and in the middle they have the shelves with, like, trades and games and stuff like that. And then when you go towards the back of the store, there's, um, like, the t- uh, they have, like, the all the magic cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon cards and all that stuff that I used to be into when I was younger. <laughs> and then... Um, then they have like actual novels in the back, so it's pretty cool. And then I think they have an upstairs. I think the guy actually like my, because it's like a downtown a- area, so there are lofts above all the stores. So I think the guy might live there, which is pretty neat. That'd be awesome. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine's just. I'm sorry, guys. Mine's the same thing. There's just boxes everywhere. Um, they have like the boxes for the statues that they're selling, like just up top. There's one that's. So there's one that's 30 minutes towards Sac- or San Francisco, and one that's 30 minutes towards like a different direction. Um, it's in a town called Livermore, and they have that guy is like packed to the brim with stuff. I mean, he has so many books that then he has boxes of the books on the floor. It looks it's a little bit of a clusterfuck, but that dude's really nice. Yeah, they have stat. I wonder how well statues actually do at the shops. As opposed to be online. Like, have you ever bought them in a shop, Francesca? Or no, do you I, I totally... I, I bought, like, a lot of them in, in shops. It just depends. Like, the sideshow ones, not so much because I, like, I prefer the payment plan versus dropping, like, a couple hundred dollars. But um, there's a Which, by of- the way, I want to ask you about how that works. Did you guys see the new Harley sideshow one? The, the, the Prime the- one. That's, like, a thousand dollars. Oh, my gosh. The yeah. base on that is, like... <laughs> So cool. I'm not a statue person. Like I don't have a huge whistle for statues, but that one is pretty dope. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you just sign up and then like you have to pay a deposit, which is usually anywhere. I know Prime One. I think it's probably the same, but they're more expensive, so your fee is going to be higher. But you pay like a forty to fifty dollar deposit, and then depending on how many payments you want to make. So if you want to make more payments, um, but you want that payment to be less, um, you know. A, so if you want like your payment monthly to be forty dollars, you're gonna start way earlier. So like let's say the product comes out in December, you're probably gonna start paying for it in like May. But yeah. if you want like three, like for me, like sometimes I'll just do um, three payments, and it'll be like a hundred and something dollars, you know, each month, and it'll start maybe like four months before it comes out. And then I don't, I mean, I'm lucky that I live in California, and their and their like sh- warehouse is in well. Where Sideshow is located is in, is in California, so my shipping's not quite as much um, as it would be for, like, one of you guys if it's across across state. Uh, and I get it, like, within a day or two. But, no, but I have bought a ton of statues in store. It's just, like, I won't, if, if that's all I, I need to buy, I probably won't drive to go get it. Like, I'll, I'll just buy it online. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, so you said it was, like, $1,000? I think that, well, most of the Prime 1, so it's like a different company, but Sideshow sells some of them. They're like $1,000, like $800 to $1,000. I know that they have a Batman one, there's Deathstroke. Uh, Did you see made, it, Amanda? No. It's based off of the modern one. Oh, look at it. You're going to cry yourself to sleep on your... <laughs> I don't know if I want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's really only, like, one other, like, like, I don't really like a ton of, um, like, have you ever heard of Five Eye Toys? Oh, Francesca's not here. No. I have you not heard of the toys. Oh, well, they have, well, because, um, 
Uh, Aaron Alexovich, dude, he's... My toys. Oh, Francesca's not here. I can hear my echo. Yeah, I'm trying to log back on to my... I'm, I'm logged on. I'm in the chat on my be under my beauty account, and I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think I fixed it. Um, well, Aaron Alexovich, he's the one that does the Invader Zim comic that's out right now. And uh, he does the um, the, Seren the Serenity Rose book. I, like, talked about it in one of my hauls, if you guys remember. But yeah. he, there's, like, a 10-inch statue, and it's the only statue of his that I've, like scene and it's uh, from five it's like I five toys or something like that and I've never I don't know anything about the company so I just I want to see if she knew anything so it's like 150 bucks like you know yeah kind of crazy. but it's such a specific artist like that I don't know if there's other stuff but like I I really really want it I think I might splurge and get it because she's so freaking cute she's like on top of her little diary and it says like I hate diaries <laughs> How cute! So, what, what's the name? Uh, I really want to look it up right now. Yeah, do you know how to put it on the screen too, in case anybody in the? We, so we I literally it. have no. I have no idea. It's I don't so know how to do that either. It's sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if I don't get it, I could just go watch uh, Statue Hero Lou or what's his channel. Lou, statue collector, I think is what it is. Yeah, is I just watch his channel because he gets every single statue, so I'm gonna watch him review it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how about shows? You want guys want to start talking a little bit about shows this week? I was actually gonna ask y'all because I haven't started any of the comic book related shows. Which one would be the first, like, the best one for me to start binge watching? Arrow. Mm -hmm. Arrow. I think she's biased. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Arrow is a good one. Um, I feel like there's like there's just a ton of tie-ins with like Arrow and Flash, like with uh, the other ones. So it's probably a good one to start with, and you can get to know some of the other characters before you see them pop up in other shows. I mean, you already on watched all of Gotham, right? I didn't. I, st I don't remember what happened. I started watching it, and then I got distracted with something else. But I do want to finish watching it, because it was really good, what I saw of it. Um, yeah, Daredevil's good, too. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's people in the... I've seen... <laughs> Millie. Millie approves of the Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I ever see anything Daredevil, I'm going to think of Millie. But you watched uh, Jessica Jones, too. Yes, I love Jessica Jones. That is a very good show. <laughs> yeah. I really love I, Zombie, and but I just started reading the first trade, and they are nothing alike. So I'm curious if once I get into later trades, if that's where some inspiration came from, because so far, like, everything is different. The origin's different. Like, everything. So... But it's still a cool comic. I I watched the first like few episodes of um, I Zombie and I couldn't commit for some reason. I need to revisit it. I love it. Was, it was good what I saw, but I think again I got distracted with something. I'm fickle. What are you are are you watching Supergirl? Um, Mercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. I am. I have to watch it on my laptop because my PlayStation won't let me watch it on there for some reason about it's something have to do with the the flash player are so. you caught up on it yeah see i i'm not caught i'm super behind so is that is it going pretty good oh it is very good i love it supergirl <laughs> is one of those shows that i like yeah i'll be a a fan girl for it go ah <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to um, I need to get caught up on it so that way I can scream with you. Yes, 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 you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, are any of you guys watching the uh, the Legends of Tomorrow? Yes. I yeah, I saw um, last week's episode. I didn't see this week's. Mm. Did you watch this week, Celia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. 
I really like the show. I still feel the same way about Captain Cold, that he's just kind of super, super corny. But I also feel like Sarah, like how they try to play on her, how they're, you know, like they're saying that she has this bloodlust and like mm -hmm. has to murder. But I don't get that vibe from her at all. I feel like they could be playing that so much bigger than they do. Like right now it just seems like she's just defending her team. You know, and that she's able to stop and has control. Yeah. You know, like, it yeah, doesn't seem is. like it's as bad as what she's, you know. She's like, I'm a monster, and I'm like, you really don't seem like a monster. Well, and as bad as Thea, because Thea from Arrow has the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. Like, I think it's way more believable. Yeah, because um. I don't see it at all, honestly, in her behavior and her mannerisms. Like I said, she just looks like she's defending people. Like, she's not killing anybody that I wouldn't be like, you should kill that person. Yeah. <laughs> Like. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, I really, I, I thought today, or well, I, I watched it today, but it was um, yesterday. I thought it was good. I mean, I, I really enjoy the show a lot, man. Like, it just, it's such a pretty show. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the fact that the characters are so diverse, the acting's actually really good. I mean, they have, um, what's the old dude's name that's from Titanic? What's his, what's his real name? <laughs> well, that's yeah. what he's from. I couldn't think of. Yeah, well, he's from, like, that's Alias, cool. um... But I always remember him as, like, the captain from Titanic. But uh, he's really good. Um, and I think having, like, someone, like, of that caliber, <coughs> sorry, guys, um, on the show, I think is is making a difference. Um, and for, like, a CGI-heavy show, the wings on the hawk people are really cool. Like, I don't know. I mm -hmm. think that, and, and like I said, I think the first episode we have. I think the fact that the people that are making this show have had experience through both Arrow and Flash, like they've really had time to advance their skills, which speaking of the Flash, did you guys see that they're going to have um, a, a crossover between Supergirl and the yeah. Flash? I was That's... super excited for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. That's I awesome. I how it's going to work. Like, if they have, because um, on an entirely different network, have they done that? Has Does anyone know if something like that's been done before, where you have, like, two shows from two entirely different networks um, merge. I don't know, actually. Me neither. I can't really recall anything. Like, I mean, haven't they had? Well, no, because like the Jetsons and the Flintstones, that was like the same network, right? That was a long time ago. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That was. All. I'm pretty sure. I, I think I remember there was like a Flintstones and Jetsons, like. Yeah, there was a there was a movie. Right. Yeah. Okay, but they were the... they were like on the same sh on the same channel, weren't they? They, are they both Hanna Barbera? Is that who does them? <laughs> I, that I don't know. <laughs> I, I do have that too. Like Scooby Doo would have like the kiss on there and everything. Mhm. Mm Wait, the but. kiss, as in like the band? Sorry, yeah, kiss. Like <laughs> different show. Had... Really? I didn't know that. Holy shit! I believe, I believe there was one. Well, did yeah. Scooby? He had he's had like a lot of hasn't he done? Wasn't Batman like there was a Batman in Scooby Doo? Wasn't there a comic book? There's a lot of. I, oh. I heard there was a team up between Scooby Doo and Harley Quinn. I don't know. Was that a myth? <laughs> I don't have that book. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Oh, um, I'm so gullible. Damn it, guys. <laughs> don't tell me these things. Don't tell me these things. So, what, if, what else uh, came on? What else? Um, did you guys talk about Arrow already? Because I saw Amanda's post about like the feels after. <laughs> I know, God. That show just it rips my heart out. <laughs> it was it was pretty sad. You know, I um, I really like. What's what's uh? Is it Raisha Ghoul? Is that how you guys say? Because everyone says it different. Like, and even wow. on the show, they say it differently. Yeah, I, th I think it's Roz Al Ghul, isn't it? Yeah, because you say Roz, and someone says Raish. Like, someone seriously, I've never, I thought, I say it Roz, too, Roz Al Ghul. Mm -hmm. um, but what's the daughter's name, the one that was, like, Sarah's girlfriend? Ta uh, Talia? I like her. She's cool. It's not, I don't think it's Talia, because Talia's, like, the daughter, but that's the one that's with Bat, you know, in the that's comics. That's right, yeah. She's yeah. with Batman, and Damien's mama. Oh, speaking of, okay, I'm sorry, I don't want to, like, distract, but... I have ADD, and it just came up. There was a new Batman movie that came out, like a DC animated movie called, um, I think it's Batman Bad Blood. 
think that's what it's called. I got a I got a digital code from a friend, and it was hella good. Like the DC, oh, really? yeah, like they're anime, and it's so mature. Like I don't understand how they can publish the stuff as like PG thirteen. Honestly, some of that stuff was like should have been rated M. Um, I don't know. Like, Slipping SpongeBob was like a three. Yeah, that's Walk up in bed crazy. with three naked women. And oh, I'm not no. joking. Yes, like I, I, like I don't know how you would explain that to your child. Like, uh, Nissa, there we go. Thank you, You're Ryan. Right. Yeah, I like Nissa. Uh, but Batwoman, it's, I think it's, it's like the introduction of of Batwoman into the into the DC like animated line, like in terms of these movies. But basically, Batman, and I'm pretty sure it's a comics. It was like a, a a comic series line. Like I think it's what happened in Grant Morrison's. Um, some of his issues, but he basically gets like abducted and mind wiped, and it's up to um, Damien, his son, Dick Grayson, who takes the mantle as Batman, uh, Batwoman, and um, Batwing. Like they come to his rescue, and they they basically like rescue him from Talia, who's the one that has him, and then she supposedly dies at the end. Spoilers. I have, like, the fun... Okay, so I read the funniest thing about, like... <laughs> so Lego, like, just spoils every single, like, movie that comes out with their sets and stuff. Like, I was reading this whole article about, like, how they'll show, like, um, their upcoming sets for movies, and they will be giving away major plot points in, like, movies with them. So, like, there was, like, spoilers for um, Civil War. There were spoilers for Batman vs. Superman. It was so <laughs> funny. I was reading it. I was just, I was dying because they were so funny. Um, the mad. Batman vs. Superman one was, like, based on a Lego comic. But um, they brought it. Did you, did you guys realize or did you guys notice, like, in the end of the Batman vs. Superman trailer that Batman had a gun? No, mm -hmm. I didn't. No. Well, Andrea, I know that you're not really big on, like, um, superheroes, but... I like Batman. Batman. <laughs> well, huh? I like Batman. Like, if we're if I'm going to do a superhero, Batman's probably it, but I'll, I just, I'm more interested in the villains than the actual Batman. <laughs> well, basically, since, like, Detective 33, when his, or like, the origin came out with, like, his family and stuff, basically, Batman's been, like, anti-gun. Uh -huh. There has been some, you know, like, the Batmobile has, like, guns mounted on it and stuff, but, like, you don't see him, like, pulling out a gun, like, using it. Um, so seeing him with a gun at the end of it is kind of like, well, that was a little weird. What's um, going on? Yeah, so, but it was funny because the Lego movie was kind of, like, play, like, or their little comic was kind of going with that, and people mm -hmm. were, uh, it was just funny to me that Lego, Lego! Oh, God, Lego, Lego, he's a dick. <laughs> Lego's become huge, man. Like, I, I don't know, within the last couple of years, I feel like it's been bigger than ever. Yeah. That's that's awesome. I mean, yeah, every time I go into the toy section, they've got some kind of, like, crazy Lego display going on, and I'm like, what employee slave <laughs> over this display? <laughs> this is your I job for the day. <laughs> I love Legos. There is a, uh, I want the Simpsons one, like the Quickie Mart, but that, it's like, it's seriously a car payment. For me to have the Lego Quickie Mart, I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's They're too hard for me to justify it. Um, so has anybody? Well, there's no movies of, that have been we released. Can talk yet. About, we can talk about new comic books. I found I found some interesting new comic books that are coming out next week. Well, before yeah, before we switch on that, I did want to talk about something because we are like oh. the, you know, all the being. Did you guys see that they're doing the all female Ghostbusters? No, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I've just, yeah, I just uh, saw that they have um, Melissa McCartney is doing it, and then it's Kristen a producer Wig. from Bridesmaids, isn't it? Yeah, she's in it. Kristen Wiig's in it. Um, Chris Hemsworth. Is, so there, it's, it, everything's basically been, like, gender swapped. So um, there's, I, I don't know her name, but it's um, one of the ladies that's from SNL is going to be yeah. in it, too. She does, like, the Justin Bieber impersonation. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I haven't watched her, but I. I just. I know she was in something else, and then it said SNL. But yeah, I think it comes out this year. Well, they're supposed to release a trailer at the end of March, and I think it's supposed to come out in July. That would be so awesome. I'm, yeah, that's. What I, I like. I uh, 
kind of thought, but I was just really excited. Um, that's actually one of that was one of the other spoilers was uh, the Chris Hemworth character. Like there was a spoiler in Lego about the Chris Hemworth <laughs> character. Oh, that Lego! Character. I just imagine people are like, "Is nothing sacred, Lego?" <laughs> I just imagine there being like a Lego Santa that beard comes off, and they're like, "Great, spoil Santa!" <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, I'm so excited for that movie. I really love the first one. Um, I'm sure there's going to be, like, a ton of negative feedback just because of it, them doing a reboot of it. Well, when it was announced, there was a lot of flack for it. Yeah. Well, the original cast is supposed to make a cameo, but, I mean, it's been almost 30 years since the second one, right? And one of them is dead. Right? <laughs> one of them died. Time to make another movie. <laughs> not to be morbid, but one of them is not making a cameo at all. <laughs> yeah, it would be really hard to do another one, but I, uh, I'm just curious to see, like, how they tie it in. Like, if they're going to be, like, uh, you know what I mean? I hope Slimer's in it. That's, like, the one thing that I really am hoping for. I want to do the giant Stay Puff, dude. Like, what? <laughs> the, the giant... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the Michelin man? Yeah. Oh, yeah that's... <laughs> that's what he looks like to me. That's what I always think of. Marshmallow jacket. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, 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 did we come... No one else No one else watches The 100, huh? I do. You do? Oh, that's... Did you watch... Did you watch yesterday's, Mercy? Um, I watch it on Hulu, so if it came out yesterday, I'll be able to watch it tonight. Okay, you should. It's 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 getting. Um, well, you saw last time that Lexa's back, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Do you like that pairing, or are you more of a Clark Bellamy person? Oh, you don't know. I know because I, I that that show is like I'm like uh I love it, and I'm like uh <laughs> and, uh you know I what? love LG. LGBT pairing, uh, ah, pairing's oh. got my sickness. So I'm totally for that uh, Klexa, as they call it. Yeah. I, I, I like that. It's different. Yeah. But, I don't know. <laughs> Silly, did you see someone said if, if that chair behind you is haunted? <laughs> I know. Well, it's because uh, it's a rocker and I'm hitting it with my leg. <laughs> Who are you going to call, Celia? Who are you going to call, Celia? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? You guys can't see him? What? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, Ian is so sweet. He just put all our Twitter handles in the comment section. He loves us. Oh, yeah. Shout out to He's our FFF. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to call Ghostbusters. Look at you. You're so funny. I know. <laughs> right. So, do we want to wait for our eggs to get on to talk about weekly comics? And do you guys, do you guys want to talk about? Because I don't, I don't know if she actually, I don't know if she's into gaming. If we want, we can do games. Yeah, I'm excited about your topic because okay. I'm, I'm excited. I know. I got to look up game stuff. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, all, 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 all your answers? Well, no, they can't be Zelda because uh, I know. <laughs> Sony. I started like I was like Legend of Zelda. I was like I have to look up something else other than Legend of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a Zelda uh, something that I found on Zelda stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that you like Bethesda games, don't you, uh, Cheska? Uh not really, actually. I um, you did. Why? No, I play I play Fallout because of Dock Me, but I stopped like within maybe five hours, and I've played a little bit of like Skyrim, like the uh, I mean I like you're probably thinking of um, the Mass Effect games. Um, I don't remember who does the Bioware. Bioware, that's what Bioware. You're I, I, like I was games. looking up. I know that um, they're you know the Doom games. Like they're releasing a new Doom game in May, and it's like really gory. <laughs> <laughs> I just I watched the trailer and I was like, that's so much gore, like so violent. But they're doing that, and then um, you know, uh, Amanda's gonna be all up on this. You know, they're doing a um Twilight Princess HD release. Yeah. Did, did you see that. all the cool new stuff that they're putting on it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited about the Ghost Lantern. 
for the pose. Yeah. I just, I want to walk around with the ghost lantern forever and be like, here, Mr. Poe, here, Mr. Poe. Because in Ocarina of Time, when you're trying to find the pose, I was just like, oh, my God, my life has just been dedicated to the pose, but now it makes it easier to find them. <laughs> and you also don't have to go through the crazy, like, you know how it takes you 100,000 years in the original Twilight Princess to change into the wolf? Yeah. Now you can just click a, an icon and you're a wolf. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's God awesome. damn it, I need to get a new game, because right now I'm just trying to build a motherfucking bridge in Crossing. <laughs> I, I was, go okay, I was like, yesterday, or the day before, I think it was yesterday, I was like, I'm going to download Yoshi Story, because I've had the the tune from Yoshi Story, which was an N64 game, for anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> I had that, like, the... Don't get the, it, it's not good. It's good, okay? I know, I've played it before. It's all, like, nostalgic. So, I was like, I'm going to download it on the Wii Virtual Console, right? I haven't used my Wii in forever. So, I was like, I'm going to use this Wii. I'm going to dust this thing off and use it. My cat chewed through the cord. Oh, my God, yes. bar. Oh, no. So, it always fucking happens. I know. Ah. I, was, I was, like, so excited. I was like, I'm going to play Yoshi's Story all night, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay, fuck you, Wii. Fuck you, cat. I can't play my game. <laughs> uh, all you 3DS owners should buy Fire Emblem later this month. Yes. I'm excited about Fire Emblem. I am. So I was on hold with GameStop for an hour and a half uh, a couple days ago. I'm so fucking pissed. They canceled my order. I had a like a special edition pre-ordered, and it was like all three games in one cart. And I've had it pre-ordered since November. Dude, I can't even buy this anymore. Like it's sold out everywhere. It's like two to three hundred dollars on eBay. I had it. It was like seventy dollars, and they canceled it because so it comes with a pre-order bonus. Um, that's like this keychain. And apparently the keychain can't be sent overnighted, which is what I had selected for my um, my shipping speed. And so they just canceled my whole order. Like they didn't even contact me and say like, "Hey, like this is gonna happen." No, they just canceled it. So I called them and I'm like, "What happened? They told you can't reinstate this. Like, you you know you really thought that I cared enough about the keychain. <laughs> like, <laughs> what?" So, uh, yeah, I'm officially, like, I know people say this all the time about, like, oh, fuck GameStop, but I actually worked at GameStop for a couple years, like, while I was in college, and I had, have, had, had, <laughs> <laughs> just holding up Link here. <laughs> we <laughs> love you, Link. Totally <laughs> put him in the screen. <laughs> Is that the Amiibo? No, I have the amoeba. This was close oh. to me. Sorry, I didn't mean, like, interrupt you. No, but it was cute. All I could see is slowly, like, the blonde coming in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm officially I'm fucking in her pocket. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I got a pocket. Got a pocket full of link. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a pickup line. <laughs> got some link in my pocket for you. Is that a link in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's hella funny. Amanda, do you mind if I lick your link? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, did you guys see that mad, uh, like, hate that's going on, or, or you know, the, the burn that's going on on Twitter between Sega and YouTube? No. You so, apparently, uh, here, let me pull it up. If you guys go on and find the Sonic the Hedgehog official Twitter. Uh, they, uh, well, actually, it started with YouTube. YouTube Gaming sent out a tweet that said, rip, you know, RIP Sonic, because someone, like, posted a video about what would happen in, if you died um, in your game as you're supposed to, basically. So it was, like, a picture of Sonic, and he gets, like, sliced in half by that metal Sonic. And so it mm -hmm. said, rest in peace, Sonic. So then... This is the and th these are like the official accounts. The official Sonic the Hedgehog uh, account tweeted YouTube Gaming and said RIP at YouTube Gaming, and it's a picture of Twitch. <laughs> oh wow! Oh. Shots fired. Shots exactly. It's hella funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Andrew, do you want to go? Because your your topic's exciting. I can't wait to talk about it. Oh me. Like what? That question, the questions you want to. Oh yeah. Um, what? 
What? Okay, so I'm sure most of us have played like PlayStation One and Two games. Like those were the like I have so many, like so many PlayStation One and Two games. What were your favorite PlayStation One and Two games? Like or like PlayStation One or Two? So I have two because I couldn't narrow it narrow it down. I would either have to say uh, Dark Cloud Two, not Dark Cloud One, because Dark Cloud One was fucking terrible. <laughs> and it was I could like I. I got thirsty in the first dungeon like 25 times and died, and I was like, fuck this. But, um. Wait, like thirsty, like like your character got thirsty? Yes, and they're okay. like, They get hungry, okay? So in the first one, in the first one, you have a, a hunger meter, a stamina meter, <laughs> fucking sword can break. Like, it is a travesty. Like, I, got, I went in there, and you're like, you're like five minutes into this dungeon and your character gets thirsty and I'm like, can you buck up, son? <laughs> can you suck it up? Can you suck it up a little bit? I never got through the first dungeon because I just kept getting thirsty and I was just, I'm gonna just fuck this, like, no. But then the second one came out and it's awesome. Awesome, and you can build like it's an RPG, and like you go through these like dungeon areas, and um, you get to like make the town. It's really fun. It's really cool, and there's like tons of hours of playtime. So that one was one that I spent a lot of time on, and I've replayed it several times. And there's not a thirst meter, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a video game character gets thirsty? That shit. <laughs> And then the Kingdom Hearts games were good. Yes, they were. Yes. Very, very good. I can't believe that it's been, like, how long? 15 years? When, did, when did, um, maybe it's been 10 years, because I think Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005. So 11 years since we got, like, an actual release. I mean, I know we've had, like, Birth by Sleep, but th those games were amazing. I've, I've played part of Birth by Sleep before, but then the little port on the... I, I got, like, halfway through it, and then something on my um, game messed up, and I haven't been able to play it, but I was, like, dying. Die, I'm, I need to, like, fix it and play it. I need to order, like, the part or whatever. It may just be less expensive to buy, like, a new old yeah. PSP. <laughs> just just buy PSP. Buy, there's, there's one that's for the PS3 now. It's it's part of, like, the HD 2.0 or 2.5 or something. Um... My I loved Final Fantasy VIII. Like I know everyone says Final Fantasy VII, but Final Fantasy VIII was my jam. That Squall and Renoa romance. Um, yes, I like it, Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, when it has like the, I mean, as a kid, like it was one of the first games that had like those super realistic like cutscenes. Like they were m literally movie quality, and it has one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. So I think that would probably be my absolute favorite PS1 game. And then I would have said Kingdom Hearts, but I'll probably go with Persona. Or Final Fantasy You definitely fun. get your money's worth out of those Persona games. Yeah. <laughs> They're Dude, $10 but, on the PS3, anyone dude, that's interested. Arm yourself with some snacks and stuff, though, because, I mean, it's basically like... <laughs> for two I mean, hours. It's like, for, you're like two hours later. <laughs> I might get to play soon. I might get to play soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I didn't have a I didn't have a PlayStation One. I went straight from like Shaq Fu Super Nintendo to PlayStation Two, and my favorite game is uh, God of War. Yay! Oh, that's right. I think you mentioned that last time. Yeah, it's that's it. It is like probably like my all time favorite video game besides Mike Tyson's Punch Out for regular Nintendo. <laughs> I like the uh, I, th I think it's the first God of War game where you're banging that chick and then when you get done like all the what is it it's like um is this I don't know or something <laughs> I can't well it's like the crystal like you, you one of the like crystals that you collect for like mana or your like weapon yeah. or something yeah it's some some like one of those things yeah pops up I think and you I have to do it like three like, times or something in that yeah you can do it like three yeah. times. <laughs> Yeah. I know, I was like, so, I remember, my because my brother's like three years younger than me, and I remember playing that, him being like, all sprung on Medusa's boobs, like, what? <laughs> Mom! <laughs> so funny. You know, I don't think I've actually mentioned it on this show or on, on Marty's show, but um, a couple years ago, I was actually on a reality TV show for PlayStation. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I was going to say, fancy. Oh, what reminded me is, um... Because one of the other girls, the other contestants, was a huge God of War fan, like humongous. And one of it was like the first day we were there. The creator 
um, of God of War, like Sigs, I can't remember his last name, but he's bald. He was there, and she was like having a panic attack over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it was really cool. See, mine. I've never played any other game, so when I got, I had a PlayStation Two, and the one game that I always played. I didn't have a lot of games, and I can't remember the other ones, but I remember this one because it's the one I always played. It was Ace Combat number four, Shattered Tide, something like that. And that was the, that's all I remember. And then now I've got a PlayStation 3, and I play, like, a whole bunch of games. Like, <laughs> all the games. Oh, yeah, so I the um like, the God of War games. I've got the... The, the Chains of Olympus and all of those, and then I've got the only one that I don't have of, have of God of War is the new one, the God of War Ascension. Mm-hmm. That one. But I've got the rest of them. Yeah. Eggsy's here! Hi! Hi. Hi. Yeah. Headphones. Look yeah, at how cute your headphones are! <laughs> <laughs> I left my other ones at work, and I was like, I hope these don't look stupid. No, I think they're <laughs> fun. You look cute. Thank you. I know, I have, are those beats? <laughs> no, I think they're urban ears or something. No. Oh, ears are I don't know anything about them, but we just got a pair of like, beats, like house beats, you know, <laughs> for everyone to use, but they're like purple and they're really pretty. I think you have a fan in the comments there, Amanda. Ooh. <laughs> hey. Oh. Ooh. It's Marty. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you play? Did you play any uh, PlayStation One or Two games, Eggsy? Um, yeah, I was a big fan of Spyro. Cool, I like Spyro say. too. <laughs> Spyro was the best. I loved like I think th- Spyro Three. I played a lot, um, and then PS Two. I was all about Kingdom Hearts. Yes, we've had some Kingdom Hearts discussion. I was asking everybody what their favorite um, like PlayStation 1 and 2 games, so you came in at the perfect time, because I'm glad I got to ask you. <laughs> awesome. I know, I was, when I was driving home, like, I hope I didn't miss that question. <laughs> Just I in time. I played Spyro a lot with my brother growing up, and I also like Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was so good. Tomb Raider. I think she's like all of our heroes for all of us that play, like, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It was like one of my first exposure to like a woman, you know, a woman in a game, and like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when I I just remember when I was a kid, like um, I'd go stay with my sister, and her husband played the hell out of Tomb Raider, and he also played the hell out of Zelda, so that's like part like I guess that's well, I mean, I played games like before that, but I was I just remember being like so obsessed with Tomb Raider and Zelda because that's what he let me play. <laughs> <laughs> Origins of my love for Zelda. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't have a PS One growing up. I had an N sixty four, but my friend had a PS One, and I used to love to watch her play Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I didn't have a play- PlayStation One either. We got a PlayStation Two like later on down the line, but I had a friend that I'd go to her house and play her PlayStation. We played Crash Bandicoot, and then I played Croc with another friend, and I really liked Croc. Is that the name of it? Croc, maybe. It was a PlayStation 1 game. It had a crocodile in it, I'm sure. Yeah, it was like C-R-O-C. Uh, yeah, yeah, C-R-O-C. That's what it was. Like yeah. the shoe. No, it's not a... It's like you're a... It's kind of like a... Um, if anybody's familiar with, like, Banjo-Kazooie, it's kind of like that kind of a game. But it you were like a crocodile, and you, like, wandered around at, like, different levels doing stuff. It was pretty cool. Like, that yeah, was it was about, like, oh. animals... Like you said, Banjo and Kazooie, Spyro, yeah. uh, Crash. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of along those lines. It was really good. Here's a question from Yolanda. What was our favorite Keyblade? <laughs> I like the Nightmare Before Christmas one. Yeah, that one. Uh, um, Oathkeeper wasn't bad. There was like the one that you would get at the end. Um, and Hollow Bastion. What was it called? I think it was like after you beat Riku. I know, I know which one you're talking about, but I don't remember all their yeah. names. It was like black, but that, that was so cool. Like, do you remember the Little Mermaid level? That thing was a piece of shit. Actually, yeah, the, the worst one was actually the, the um monster one, the Pinocchio level. 
I was just so I felt so gypped because I was like, this is gonna be so cool. We're gonna get to swim around and kick ass under the <laughs> sea, and they were like, sing these songs, and I was like, no, I'm like the Winnie the Pooh Bear one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one was cute though. <laughs> so I have a funny Kingdom Hearts story. When I was playing Kingdom Hearts one, I was playing it with my friend who was like, you don't need to read the instructions. I've played it before. I'll just like walk you through it. So I was playing for a really long time, and then I got up to the Little Mermaid level, and I could not beat Ursula. And I was like, this is too hard. So I was at school, and this kid was like, hey, if you want, you could give me your memory card, and I'll beat Ursula for you. And I was like, that would be amazing, because I, I have, don't know what to do. She's so hard. And so I gave it to him, and then he calls me, and he's like, hey, um, did you? so you have the original Keyblade, did you know that you can upgrade your Keyblade as you play? I was like, there's more than one Keyblade? <laughs> <laughs> so I played that whole game up until Ursula with the starter Keyblade. That's but, impressive. Well, I was super proud of myself. I'm like, I yeah. got so far in that game with uh, the worst weapon, and then it was so much easier after that. And for Kingdom Hearts 2, I learned my lesson, but... Because I mean, you also beat the Hercules level. Like, Cerberus was hard, so that's hell of impressive. Cerberus was hard, but yeah, yeah. you've got major street cred now, Eggsy, okay. with your, <laughs> your <laughs> starter Keyblade. Starter Keyblade. <laughs> oh, and then um, in Kingdom Hearts 2, I didn't realize this either. I just don't pay attention, I guess. Every level <laughs> tells you what level you should be at when mm. you go into it. So when you get to the final boss, they're like, you should probably be like level 80. And I think I was like, 15 levels lower than I should have been, and I could not beat the last boss. I'm like, this game is too hard. I don't understand why they make this game so hard. <laughs> I've learned my lesson to start reading instructions and paying attention. But <laughs> I'm guilty of that too. I'm just like, let's let's do this balls in, and then I'm like, oh, I probably should have done this first. <laughs> um, did, you, did any of you guys ever watch Digimon? Yes. When you were no. no. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, new, <laughs> the new game came out on Tuesday uh, for it, and it is like waves of nostalgia. Uh, I played it. I've played it for maybe like five hours so far. It's so cute. All those little oh. characters are adorable. Oh, my heart. My heart. I used to watch. It used to be. I just remembered that it was on in the mornings when I was going to school. So, I think it was on Fox. Wasn't yeah. it on Fox? Because then the um, Pokemon was like on the CW or whatever it used to be before. Because mm -hmm, I just remember my brother being like, this is bullshit that's not Pokemon. <laughs> I was like, silent. I used to watch Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, my, my headphones went, like, ran away from me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tucker, did you want to talk about the uh, topic of? <laughs> Sorry. Do you guys? Do you guys want to talk? Does anyone want to talk about other books of the week? Um, like other have had? Did anyone read any books this week outside of the one that we picked? No. Nope. <laughs> I read uh, DC, DC DC Bombshells one and two. How is it? It was pretty good. It's uh set back in like the forties. So I mean, like I just the way the character. Yeah, the first one was a little slow. The second one's all right. Well, the artist in that book, I think she's the one that's um that did some of the art for Faith that we talked last week. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> um, well, I read uh, I read A Force. Like I really like. I think Jorge Molina's art is so nice. It's so pretty, and I just like, like, these are some of my favorite Marvel characters, so I like that I can actually, like, I don't have to buy all their individual books. I can see a little bit of, of each of them in this one. So that's uh, that's some cool stuff. And then, I don't know if you guys, Captain Marvel came out, too. That's the new yeah. the new one. I think this number is two. Yeah, number two. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. okay. I like Sasquatch. He's funny. Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anybody named Sasquatch has to be. Right. Funny. There's a part where he. It, it's uh, this girl. I, I, God, I, I can't remember her name. I think it's Aurora. It's one of the the Alpha Flight members, and she says something like, "Uh, you can let go of my hand now," because he's just like <laughs> enamored by her. It's so cute. Um, 
and then Shudder. God, Leila DeLuca, she's the, the artist for Shudder. She's amazing. I think that's probably my favorite part of, of the book and the series. That and there's a cat named Alarm. Well, it was an alarm in the shape of a cat. And his name was that, Alarm Cat. That's <laughs> cute. Yeah. Did you, when y'all went into y'all's shop, did y'all see Dr. Mirage? I picked it up, but I didn't read it yet. There, I think one and two are out. I'm pretty far behind. I only read like the first uh, issue of like the series that came out last year. I never really kept up with it. I just I just saw it and I was like, mm, that looks interesting. I wonder. I need to read it and like gather thoughts on it. But it looked really good. Okay. Uh, nice. I, um, I don't. I can't remember what came out last week, but from my polls that I read, I know I read Old Man Logan. Um. And that was okay. I mean, it wasn't a very exciting first issue, and I don't really know too much about the continuity of it, or if it's, like, going, I like, because I'm not reading the other Lemire book. Um, but it was okay. I mean, it was easy to follow along. She's just uh, looking I, Wolverine from, like, one of the, is this, like, a Secret Wars kind of thing? Like I think it's supposed to be, but I, I, like I said, I didn't read Secret Wars, or, you know, and I don't know about the other book that's going on right now, so... I have no idea, but what I but picking it up as a number one, it was it was easy to read and follow along with, but it it was okay. Um, I read Paper Girls today, the new one that came out, um, I and I read wait. I read Doctor Strange and uh, Scarlet Witch from this week. So I just read because I I went to my comic book store. I could I wasn't able to go Wednesday, and I tried to go Thursday. Like I went and picked up my kid from school. Mm -hmm. I was like going to the pop comic book store, and it was funny because I was like, okay, we're gonna go in here. You can't touch anything. You have to listen. <laughs> so I'm like I'm like psyching myself up to like not kill my child in the comic book <laughs> store. And uh, we get there, and I'm like, I left my purse at home. No. <laughs> No comics, and then at that oh, point wow. I was just, you know, I was so pissed off. I just, I was just like, I'll go tomorrow. So I went today. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you read Scarlet Witch, uh, Cheska? I did it. You know what? I, I saw that with Steve Dillon doing the art, and I'm like, uh, maybe I'll just wait for this to come out and trade. I don't know. I'm not, and I'm, I'm starting to get tired of the fact that they're changing artists for every issue. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed. Um, oh gosh, who was the last one? Mark, what? Mm. Mark, Mark, whoever. Marky Mark. Nick <laughs> Mark the, the, last, the last issue was good. This one, I mean, it's just a lackluster art in it. I mean, so it's not that, but it, you know, I was excited because she's in Ireland and stuff, and I feel like the the story is good. Like I'm enjoying the story, and I in this one, I don't want to say too much then, but um, it was really good. I liked it. The ending was uh interesting, so. What do you guys think about, because she has a redesigned costume, do you guys, are you guys a fan so far of, like, all the different costume changes that have been happening, especially in the Marvel Universe? I feel like we were seeing it way more often. Um, like, DC, the only one I can really think of that's been a notable one has been Batgirl, but with Marvel, we've had her, Scarlet Witch, Spider-Woman, Captain Marvel, um... Who else has had, like, a recent change? I feel like there's been more. Well, I, I guess, like, Wolverine, because... Well, uh, it's 23 is Wolverine now. Well, speaking of costume change, in A Force, Dazzler's yes. costume change too. That's right. And That's right. Speaking of speaking of A Force, because as you probably already knew, I went to my first comic shop. I actually got comics that came out <laughs> on a Wednesday. Really? So, yeah. I was like, yay! I made my <laughs> comics with them too. So. So, for now, I am going to be driving about two and a half hours away just to go to a comic shop and grab my pull list. Wow. That's dedication, dude. That's quite yeah. a trick. <laughs> Have you I seen her video to get one short rocks? Yes, that was yeah. so yeah. cute, Mercy. <laughs> I was just, the whole time I was watching that video, I was just like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. <laughs> Not only is she driving two hours, she's driving two hours while she's pregnant. That seems like it would be a nightmare. Yeah, like, you're a trooper. Yeah, you are. That is that is dedication. Oh yeah, I love you for that. <laughs> you're it's, you're supporting the comic book industry. Your I would have been so annoyed if I would have driven all that way to come home to find out my box was slightly different dimensions than all of my other boxes. <laughs> yeah, like, when I got like firewood. Uh, 
yeah, my boxes are really short, and this one is like about this much short, and then my box is about this much taller. So I'm like, um, yeah, this is gonna be annoying. So it's just because of the end box. You're gonna live in a different room, Mr. Box. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would have driven all the way back to return that box. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. But, but anyways, okay, so A-Force. Uh, when I was reading it, I noticed that Kelly Thompson was in it. And mm -hmm. she gem in the holograms. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she was going to take over that, but I didn't know that they were going to take, like, I didn't know that she was going to take over this soon. And I didn't know either. Yeah, I, I didn't know when she was going to take over. I knew she was going to take over, but, you know, I didn't know she was going to take over this soon. And also, I, you know, I love Kelly Thompson. And like, I like the way that she does Gem and the Holograms, too. And I just hope that they don't, like, I hope that she doesn't stop with Gem and the Holograms. Oh, yeah, you mean, like, because this will be too much for her or something? Right, yeah. yeah. I, I don't... Hope... Yeah. Go ahead. Like I like I, I love the way that she does it. I just don't want her to stop with Gem and the Holograms just to do A Force, you know. I don't think she will because I think I she had she has actually um they used to do a podcast. I think that since she started writing more frequently, I think she's put a stop to it. But I think it was called um, Three Chicks Left Comics or something something like that. And it was her and one of the women that's in charge of like the DC women kicking ass. Um, oh. Tumblr and, and Twitter, and I think she mentioned that like she had pitched Gem in the holograms. Like I feel like when you go through that through all that trouble, it becomes your baby, and I think right. it'll probably be a while before we see. I, I really would have a hard time like imagining Gem in the holograms without her and without Sophie Campbell's art. Like I I think that's oh. what makes that series like oh. I mean colorful is the word what I think of it. That's that's what I think of. I think of colorful. I mean, it's one of my favorite. And I didn't even like. I don't honestly don't even remember much about the show, Gem and the Holograms. Like I watched a little bit of it, so I can't even say it's a ton of nostalgia. I just think it's an enjoyable comic. Like I really like it. Uh, definitely. I have the first trade paperback of that sitting at my shop. I haven't been there in like three weeks, and I'm so nervous to go because I'm gonna. It's good. I'm gonna have like the most expensive pull. <laughs> you know are gonna be like, give me your rot arm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, yeah, I kind of want to drop some of these. Sorry. <laughs> Please so, don't hate me. I know. I have, been, have you guys dropped anything recently? Like I, so Scarlet, which is what I drop. Yeah, um, I can't remember if we, if I talked about this last week, but I very um, sadly dropped Lumberjanes. Which I was very sad about, but I had to do it. So someone recommended those to me. It's you know the the whole team switched, and I just didn't like it after that. And I tried, I I gave a very valiant effort, and I was finally like my the girl in my comic shop was like, if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, and I dropped some Marvel stuff that I'm just gonna start picking up and trade because I'm like, the, the, I already have like two like volumes worth of comics that I have not picked up yet. I'm like, I'm just wasting money. I'm gonna buy the trade anyway. So. Yeah. And there are just some things that read better in trade. I know it sucks to say, and I, and I, I know that it's not ideal. Um, it's what people say. They get mad if, if, if we do that. But there are just some, some st stories that flow much better when you can read them in succession like that. Yeah. Um, and I think people just need to realize that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I didn't feel bad dropping some Marvel titles because it's Marvel. It's like I, I like... I feel more guilty if I'm dropping an independent title. I felt mm -hmm. really bad about dropping Lumberjanes. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm like, Marvel's fine. <laughs> they, they can manage without me. Well, they have like what, like at least eighty titles, like, and they're relaunching all the time. I think, I think that they're okay. Yeah. Um. Spe speaking of independent publisher comics, do we want to talk about the comic that we all read together? Yes. Kennel Block Blues number one. Yes. Yeah. I'm ready. You know, Millie actually recommended this book, but um, Amanda is equally excited about it, so we're yeah. going <laughs> to let her kind of introduce it. 
Um, so a little bit about my interests. I love anthropomorphic animals. So when Millie said anthropomorphic animals, I said, yeah, we're reading that. Um, <laughs> but uh, basically, should I... Let me see. Should I do one of these fancy screen shares? Yes. Uh, get fancy. One of these, one of these things. All right. So uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Panel block blues. So um, I didn't know what this was about. I mean, to the exception of like what Millie said it was about, except that it was kind of like a musical, but they're also on death row. Um, <laughs> and I... I have, like, weird mixed feelings about this. Like, I don't know. Like, did, What did you guys think? Did you like it? I did I not. Liked. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way you do. Like, I have mixed feelings. Um, I, this is, like, my first experience with uh, this type of book. Um, in real life, I absolutely hate movies and stuff where the dog's mouths move and they talk freaks me out. So, I got, I mean, so you don't like all dogs go to heaven? No, no, no. I'm talking about like, like you know, like the Bush's Baked Beans commercial where that dog's mouth oh, moves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like dog. that kind of stuff. For some reason, it creeps me out. But <laughs> I thought it was going to be weird and I wouldn't be able, you know, like the, the fact that they have people hands, like, was just strange. Like, I thought it was going to be weird. But, um... I actually really enjoyed it, and, like, his little fantasy that he goes through, the really cutesy part that, like, I laughed several times. I thought the relationships and the quick character develop, like, I could totally sense the personalities of, like, the characters, like, the other dogs and the cats and stuff. Like, I just, I felt like I, the world and the character, like, I got, like, pulled into it so quickly that, you know what I mean? Like, I was just really into the story. Um, it was kind of... The end was really sad for me, mm -hmm. but um, it was just, I thought I thought it was a fun book to read. Like, I didn't expect to like it, but I did. And the art was good. Like, it was so weird to me how they made these dog faces have such human emotion. I'm like, <laughs> what sorcery is this? Yeah, um, I definitely, I, I really liked, and I, I kind of knew that I, I would like it based off of, like, when we were looking it up with Millie, like, the dichotomy between this super cutesy, fun, like, Steamboat Willie-esque, like, animation, and then you have, like, dark and dingy, like, real life over here. Um, I was just it, thinking that, too, because, like, the Steamboat Willie, I was, yeah, when I watched, when I read it, I was like, oh, my goodness, it reminds me of, like, yeah. the old time me. I was like, yeah! How do you guys sing the song in your head, by the way? Oh, that, that's what I was going to say. Like, I... Uh, I, I thought of the Legally Blonde, musical? like the movie Legally Blonde, where like they sing it's a perfect day. Like who, who <laughs> sings that song in real life? I don't know who it is. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. <laughs> really? Okay, well, whoever. Yeah. That's what I, I don't know why, that's what I had in my mind the entire time he's singing his freaking song. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't have one. I was like a, like a rhythmless, like, I don't know, like going through it like, hmm. Like, I couldn't... <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. <laughs> so maybe I'll try using that. Maybe I'll try using that uh, beat, you know, that song while I'm reading it now. Well, that's what it reminded. Like, that's what I thought the song was going to be. <laughs> it looks like, like, like when I was reading it and, like, when it was up to the, like, um, it kind of reminded me of the, off of, uh, what is it called? The movie, uh, who, who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, and they're all singing and everything. That's what it kind of reminded me of. So it oh, yeah. That little tune in my head. Totally. Yeah. And tune down. Yeah. There you go. I yeah. Tune down. I, I feel don't know like it's really just... cheesy, just to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't think of a tune in my head. So, like, him, them singing, I know they're supposed to be singing, but for me it doesn't translate well. Maybe I'm just not very creative in my brain to, like, <laughs> make up a song. Uh, but I had a hard time with the singing. And uh, the thing I didn't like was that he, when he was inside of this dream world, he <laughs> he wasn't singing, like, it wasn't happening in his head. He was actually singing yes. to the other dogs in prison. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> See, that's, I just found it so cheesy. I, I think the concept is really cool, but I just could not get behind the singing. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't. 
I couldn't. I was just was just like re- like I think the art is really good, and I think it's a really cool idea. I just think that they took it a really like cringy kind of way. Well, I wonder if like how it's gonna be is like this first issue. Like, I wonder if the level uh, or like how much musical is in it is kind of a depiction of how naive he is, and maybe once he gets yeah. more and more. Um, you know, like brought into reality and into the severity of his situation. If he's not going to be able to escape to that land, and it gets smaller and smaller, and diminishes. You know, that's a that's interesting. Well, and uh, it's, there's only four issues of this. It says one of four. Right. Well, it made me was, sad though too. Like, like yeah. he, he was so happy that he thinks he's going to get out, and he's there for a mistake, and. And at the end of this, he was like, "Uh oh, it just got real." Like he knows that he's probably not gonna get out, you know. Um, I I was freaked out though by that guy Charlie. He's like the old hippie. (laughs) He was a little creepy. Like we got to see pickles in action. There he is. There he is. He was creepy. Yeah, so the the little Chihuahua lady, she reminds me of like Rosie Perez, the actress. Like that's, <laughs> that's who I would pick to play her in a movie. <laughs> the thing that kind of creeped me out was that he was talking about that he was a pet to a family, and I'm like, there's no way that I'm gonna have a dog, that thumbs <laughs> and shit, walk around in my house in some loafers. Like that's just weird to me. Like that. Yeah, that that is. Admit that he's still a pet to someone's family. I'm like, uh, eh, not with man hands. You're not like. <laughs> <laughs> it also might be his like visual interpretation of the other dogs around him. Like this is how like they see each other. Even though like we see them as actual dogs, this might be the way that they all see. Oh, interesting. You know, that's, one another. Yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. I really we'll liked see- Cosmo though. Yeah. Well, it's especially in- you know. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just thinking that, especially since you said that, like, um, because the end, you know, how I'm assuming that what that the black was was a person taking the dog. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the fact that they don't see that, he's not looking at that as a hand, that could definitely be that this is their reality and what they see our reality is they're, like, totally opposite. So that's, that kind of makes sense, actually. Because they, they called in the guards, and mm-hmm. because... Maybe that's what they see us as. Yeah. So that's... Yeah. Well, I imagine yeah. since you know, like you know, what's happening to the dog, like when the guard is coming to take them. I, I imagine like since they smell like the death or whatever, that's probably how they see it as like death yeah. coming to get them. Mm-hmm. It made it's... me sad. I probably won't keep reading it because I I'm just so squishy about animals. I was just like so sad the whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. And um, I like, think it's black because euthanasia solution is pink. Oh. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. I feel like I'm gonna pick this up again because I I really liked like you know the scene where um sugar like she's killing the cats with her prison shank. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> I love like, that. Let candy. Me okay, around. I was confused about um, that though. Oh, so, it is. His interpretation of someone getting shanked in the blood is candy. Yeah. This was yeah. so good. Why uh, <laughs> didn't they give was, was Chester like her like was it her previous um, roommate? Like why did why did Pickles want Jackson to give that particular call to her? I bet it's somebody that the the like evil cats like killed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, but I mean, like, why her? Like, was it was it her? Like boyfriend, like did, did I? I was just saying, did 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 I miss something? Like, did they talk about Chester early in in the comic? Like, no, did, no, it just was the 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 caller. They didn't say okay. they didn't like iterate who he was. Okay, cool. I just wasn't sure if like I had missed, and I honestly only read it once. I didn't go back and reread it. So, well, maybe sometime in later on in the other issues, they'll go back to it, and maybe she'll like spill out a story, and we yeah. probably find out who it was. But, so if they get a, if in this, like, dog prison, or this animal prison, if they get a bitch in prison, do they just call it a female woman? Like, or do they call it a bitch? <laughs> Guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also really like the, when the food, I mean, I really like the play between the two worlds, because, like, the food scene, too, like, where they, um, 
they're like, ooh, this slop, and then it's like, ooh. Yeah, and it's like, oh, fun colors, sherberty goo. Oh, that was so funny. This. Yeah, I loved it. Oh, Millie has um has clarified for us. Chester was apparently the alpha of the prison, so he was like oh, in charge of the dogs. I see it before the cat was then. Yeah, gotcha. That's right. That was that little diagram the that they showed where they had like something that was passed. Yeah, but then where it was it, it was showing like how the cats like took over the prison yeah. and everything. They did. I have only seen one cat. Oh yeah, it says our alpha Chester must have really ruffled some fur. I see. Mm, okay. Oh, Millie, I bet you found Waldo like that on every page. <laughs> <laughs> I think I may, I may pick up the next issue too, just because I, I do want to see. I really did like the art, and I like that page is so funny to me. <laughs> look at, this look is at, great. This is look at Rosie oh. Perez's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. That's like my. I want that as a poster. It's hilarious. So I, I'll probably just just to see where it's at. But yeah, I agree. Some of them, if they had more, like, the, at least the cats have, like, the sharp teeth. But I think it is creepy where they have, like, especially freaking Charlie. Like, those teeth, that face, it's creepy. <laughs> it is creepy. It's like Cheech and Chong in the yes, bin. Yes! Oh God, it totally looks like him. You're right. I, uh, I want to know, why, why is there a lizard? Or an iguana. Like, why do they have an iguana and a raccoon there? Like, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. You know. I thought it was interesting though that they did have reptiles. Well, like, you can't you know. have a raccoon as a pet, so it wouldn't. Like, if this is supposed to be the pound, like, yeah, iguanas will sometimes no, end up a, there. He's a janitor. He works there. Oh. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Look, yeah, he, look at you noticing stuff. <laughs> Analyzing things <laughs> using <laughs> your brain. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the raccoon and the questionable lizard creature are uh, it is. smuggling, you can smuggling see. cheese into a yeah. yeah smuggling cheese in books <laughs> and radishes. <laughs> There's one is like sitting in the library like reading his book <laughs> and nonchalantly <laughs> patches passes him a radish. Ooh. <laughs> Or a beet. What is that? I don't know vegetables. I think it's a beet. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a radish. I don't know. He's like from Doug. Remember the show Doug? Where he would oh, always... Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mystery vegetables. Hey, so not to go off topic, did you guys watch Orange is the New Black? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Do you guys know that the yoga lady is Patty from Doug? Oh, oh my Patty. god! Yeah. 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 It sounds just like her. her talk. Yeah. That's funny. Sorry, that's <laughs> way off topic there. Well, I see like there's like a lot of lot of movies that I've seen like older movies that these people are on. I'm like, hey, I've seen her. Orange is New Black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, how many of you guys are actually gonna pick up the next issue of this? I, I will. will. Yeah. I'm not going yeah. to. It made. I'm really curious about the story, and I'm curious to see where it goes. But I think it just made me too sad. <laughs> that's that's a valid thing. I mean, it wasn't. It's interesting. It's nice to have things like this where not. It's not all like universally loved. I think. I think if all of us here like the same thing every single show, it would it would get boring. So it's good to have like, confl yeah. you know, not conflicting but different opinions about stuff. I like it. And I I just I absolutely love that the cats like. Uh... <laughs> the cat's, what is it, Alpha or whatever, that his name is Pickles. Pickles. <laughs> I knew Pickles was, I knew Pickles was, Pickles. was going places. <laughs> Can someone please get a cat and name it Pickles? Dude, I'm I on it. I it was like, mid, like a sinister ass looking cat when I named it Pickles. <laughs> Super funny to me. So, um, I, who, I think, was it Amanda that was picking the book for next week? Um, yes, yeah. I was uh, thinking about a book called Jonesy um, by Boom. Another Boom book. I can uh, read the description if you want. It says, uh, Jonesy is a self-described cool dork who spends her time making zines nobody reads, watching anime, and listening to Riot Girl bands and 1D simultaneously. But she has a secret <laughs> nobody knows. She has the power to make people fall in love, anyone, with anything. She's a cupid and plaid with a tumbler. There's only one catch. It doesn't work on herself. She's going to have to find love the old-fashioned way, and in the meantime, figure out how to distract herself from the real emotions she inevitably has to face when her powers go wrong. 
That sounds interesting. I like I'll, it. I'm into it. Yeah, I think it's super. I think it's cute. I think it totally appeals to a new age too. You know, with like the Tumblr and Z. I don't even know how to use Tumblr, man. I'm I like, felt that. I liked that design. about Faith too. <laughs> I looked it up, and it reminds me of so oh, much about the time. of what of Adventure Time. Oh yeah, and Clara. Oh. Yeah. Like the art totally reminded me of like Clarence. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that one it looks so cute. Like it looks like a lot of the indie artists that I, I really like. Um I I have a few people that I like to like their zines and stuff on uh, Etsy and it just it reminds me of that. So I just I'm excited about this one. I think it's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. So and this oh, is, I think the the most I've ever read from Boom at like one time, so <laughs> Oh, actually. <clears throat> yeah, Boom's also doing uh, Giant Days, I believe. Oh, yeah. I love Giant Days. And it's it's funny because I, like, have the stipulation that Boom is for kids, but it's not. Like, Giant Days is not a kid's book at all. <laughs> so well, it's definitely, like, it's about, like, four girls in college. So they, like, talk about, like, sex and drugs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is this isn't... Boom! Really? Okay. Because, like, you know, they yeah, they do Adventure Time and stuff, so... Whoops. <laughs> Giant Days is great, and y'all should read it if you haven't yet. <laughs> I actually just saw it today in the in the comic book store. The, I th- I, the cover was really cool for the last one. So I, w- I was, like, the first time I had ever been like, oh, what's this? <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. What what yeah. book are they on? Which, what, um... What is it? Uh, issue far? 10? Oh, Issue 10. Oh, and uh, I just saw in the comments, Ian said that Clive Barker's, uh, one of his comics is from Boom, and Clive Barker's, like, a notorious horror writer, so... Oh, ma. Yeah. It's really not child-oriented if it's horror. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> have y'all, uh, speaking of horror, have y'all looked at, like, any books that come out next week? Because I was looking earlier, and there's this really cool new, like, it looks like it's probably going to be, like, a horror book coming out from D.C., it's called Dark and Bloody, and it's about it's about a war veteran in Kentucky who starts running moonshine in a dry county with his like former regiment that he was with in Iraq, and apparently they did some messing around in Iraq with something that they weren't supposed to be doing, and so it says that something deadly and otherworldly is going to come back for vengeance. So I think that's going to be really interesting. I'm not big on horror. Like, I'm legitimately a chicken shit when it comes to that, so... <laughs> no, I'm all about I'm so bad. Same here. I, I don't like horror, but there's one... Co- there's, like, a comic out there. Um, It's the Colder. The Colder series. And I absolutely love it. But, like, it's like... It's like horror, too, but it messes around with your head, so you gotta, like, like really pay attention to it. Thriller. The worst yeah. part about horror comics is, like, because you can't go like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, you close your eyes and you're still, like, it's all way <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely closed a book, and this, here, I'll show you what I do. <laughs> I'll do it with the one that made me do it. So, like, I'll be reading Lock and Key, right? And then I get scared, and I close it, and I just go like this. <laughs> Aww. And then, oh, it can't, no. and then it can't hurt me. That's what, when I was on the train coming back from San Diego Comic Con, I was reading like volume, I think volume five of Lock and Key, and like something really horrific happened. I was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mandy, you were reading Death Head, weren't you? Yes. I picked me? up the first one. Not me. Scary. I not me. You. <laughs> oh, like, oh, Eggsy. I'm sorry. Yeah, that one was kind of scary too. Yeah, the uh, the last issue is coming out in two weeks. Mhm. Yeah, I, I really like the first one, and I actually read it on your recommendation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Um, there, I like it a lot, and it's a, uh, it's pretty. It can it can can be pretty scary, but there's a lot of layers to it, which I really like. Um, and a lot of oh fuck moments. So that's always <laughs> so that's always fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll definitely pick it up when it comes out trade. Are any of y'all going to get the Harley's Little Black Book number two that's coming out? Yes. 
<laughs> of course you are. <laughs> so what exactly are those? Because I haven't picked them up. Are they just like random covers or like? I know that uh, when I looked at it, it says there's a re regular color cover and a variant cover. Um, Amanda Connor is doing the regular cover, and John Timms is doing the variant cover. So it looked like there were just two. Mm -hmm. but oh, so yeah. instead of doing the same cover but penciled and inked and colored. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, I like that they're doing that. I got those. I got the Flash and I got the Wonder Woman one. Nice. Yeah. Did you Okay, there's a there's a new. I'm actually going to get this one cuz it's um it's it's called Batman Arkham Knight Batgirl and Harley Quinn number 1. I saw and it's, that. It's an origin of Batgirl and like early adventures of Har Harley Quinn. So I think I'm really I think I'm going to get this one. I think I'm going to be interested in it. I think yeah, almost everything that's coming out next week that I'm going to be picking up is going to be DC, surprisingly. So Black Canary, Batman, Catwoman, and I think I'm going to try out that book too. But there's almost no like, oh, there's actually there's a gem in the holograms Valentine's Day special that I'll probably pull that too. <laughs> so cute. Do you guys want to talk about our topic of the week? You guys ready for that? That was just recently on. I watched that. I, I'm almost. I think it was last week after the episode. I think it was on TV. Oh we man, I, I, I really want. I want to get that on Laserdisc. So bad. <laughs> expensive. All right. Yeah, so uh, like you're gonna pay for your memories. <laughs> You want to feel nostalgic? Pay me all your money. Oh, oh, oh. oh, those are nice. I don't. I wonder, wonder if Bruce Timms is related to um, oh, or, not, or, or what was his name? John Timms. John Timms. John Timms. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's related to Bruce Timms, the guy that actually like created you know a lot of these characters and was a big you know the father of the DC um, animated series. This one was my favorite. This one I love. Yeah. If you haven't read it, you should totally read it. <laughs> Amanda's over there like, I love everything Harley. <laughs> Harley, Tell Harley. Me more. <laughs> um, so our topic of the week for this week was, uh, I was there, an artist, and I think we talked potentially about just including now also a writer, where you love their work on one you know, series or, or one title, but um, have not been a fan of it on another. And uh, I can start it off if you guys want, since I kind of came up with it. Um, I am going to go with John Romita Jr., um, who I don't actually have a whole lot of experience of, but just recently he has been doing some of the art on like the Superman series, and I don't think it's very flattering. Um, and I stopped picking that up a long time ago, but then I've heard a lot of good stuff about The Amazing uh, Spider-Man by... Um, Michael Straczynski, I think that's how you pronounce it, and the main guy that's been doing a lot of the art for him has been John Romita Jr., and I was like, when I first saw that, I was like, uh, I'm not sure if I want to pick this up, because his characters are just, like, blocky, like, it's very 90s, like, I just didn't think it would flow very well, but then, um, I've been reading it, I'm maybe, like, halfway through this trade, and I love it, like, I think that it's probably... I, I definitely I think I like it better than like um, Huberto Ramos's art, like because they both kind of have that cartoon that cartoony feel to it. And I think the reason why I'm liking it more in Spider Man than I am in um, in like the Superman is because he wears a mask and I'm like he doesn't have a whole lot of facial portraits, you know. It's it's just you know Spider Man in tights, and so I just I think it just works well. So. Um, most recently, just because it's been on my mind, I would say him, because he received so much flack for a lot of his art, but I, I really like it. I really like it in this. So, John Romita Jr. is my pick. I'm not seasoned enough for this topic, so I'm going to leave it to you <laughs> ladies, because I'm still a noob. Well, there still could be something that you, like, read, like, recently, and, like, you're like, oh, this person's, you know... <laughs> No. Like, I love everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at that new place where I'm like, comics make me vomit rainbows. I don't want anything. <laughs> Get stabbed in the stomach and start bleeding candy. That's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, I kind of have, I guess, 
to... Like, this is kind of hard for me because I feel like most of the people that I really enjoy, I really like that I've enjoyed everything they do kind of across the board. Um, either just because of what they're choosing to do or whatnot, but, like, so I really like the way Matt Wagner did Batman in the Monster Men series. I really enjoyed that, but I remember him doing work. He did. He writ, wrote a book and drew for, um, it was, like, Trinity, and it was a Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, I believe, and Wonder Woman in there was horrible. She looked like China, like that old wrestler, Ooh. and I hated <laughs> that. But um, I would say the other one is, like, a little bit more recent, uh, but it's the Vanessa Del Rey, because I really liked her art in Hit, and I think, but didn't Boom Studios do that? Did anybody else read Hit? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, it was just kind of like, it was like in the 50s, and it was like hitmen that were like police officers. It was really good, and the art fit really well, and it, I, I really enjoyed it. That was my only experience with her, and then when I heard she was doing the first um, Scarlet Witch book, I was really disappointed because her face on the Scarlet Witch, it was just really awful. It was, I, I couldn't get into it at all. There was only one page in that book that I actually enjoyed, and Beyond that, I thought it was just really, it was so scratchy and so, like, I just feel like the Scarlet Witch, who I always think of as just beautiful and, Mm -hmm. you know, just wasn't. She was just, like, haggard and old-looking, and I didn't like it. So those, I guess, would be mine. Mine was really hard because, I like, I was sitting there and I was thinking of it. And then I thought about when I first started collecting, like, the older comics, like, the back issues and everything. I was like, I used to collect them because of their covers. Mm, uh-huh. You know, I got a couple of them. That I got a couple of them because I absolutely love the covers. Well, then I go and find out that they're David Finch covers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love when he was doing the covers. But I just hate how he draws the new Wonder Woman. So my pick would have to be, you know, David Finch. But, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Millie said um, that she likes John Romita Jr.'s art on Daredevil back from the 80s, but she doesn't like any of his other stuff. So since I have nothing, I will... They what Millie said <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> what about you guys? I I couldn't really think of anyone for this, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a little different. So um, I really I, it throws me off when I see like an artist switching to writing because mm-hmm. so for example like Chip Zardusky does the art on Sex Criminals where he does have like a heavy hand I think in writing with Matt Fraction, but I'm so used to, like, I associate Chip Zardusky with a very specific style, and now he's writing comics that he's not doing the art on, like, Captara and Jughead and Howard the Duck, so it's really weird for me to see his name on it, and then to have, like, Erica Henderson's artwork in Jughead, where I'm like, wait, but it's Chip, <laughs> why, why does Jughead not look like the way that, you know, yeah. they do in Sex Criminals, so that that really throws me off, and then because it's not a reflection of, like, the artist being bad. It's just, like, my brain associates, like, a very specific style with Chip Zardusky to have another artist on that is just really weird for me. Hey, Amanda, what are you thinking of Jughead? Sorry, I just want to, I'm just curious why you brought it up. Me, me Amanda? Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. Uh, I think, <laughs> I just want to make sure. Um, <laughs> I, I sort of have the same consensus, I think, as other people where, like, it, I would love to see, like, a more grounded Jughead. Like, I love the Jughead, the way that he's portrayed in Archie, like, the Mark Wade run of Archie. Yeah. And he's so completely different in Jughead. He's very ridiculous. He, like, goes and We go into his fantasy world a lot. Right. And I like how mopey he is in Archie. And he's, like, really grounded. He has, like, like a level head on his shoulders. Like, yeah, he's still obsessed with burgers and food, but it's so funny, like that he's so serious but still wears a paper crown on his head. Um, and yeah. the, in Jughead, I just think, I think that's the consensus of, like, it's a little too ridiculous. Uh, I do still find it funny. I, I love Chip's writing. 
And I think that um, him and Erica Henderson are, like, a good pairing, but that sort of leads into, like, I'm, I associate Archie with a very specific art style as well. So then you have Jughead, and it's two different artists. And yeah. so that's weird. So I don't associate them in, like, the same world mm -hmm. at all, um, if that, if that kind of kind of answers it. <laughs> Makes sense. So. Yeah, I know. I feel the exact same way. I was just curious. Um, I can't... The little fantasy take-off, spin-offs are... They're so distracting and just not very entertaining for me. Like, even though I recognize them and, you know, like, I understand, like, where they're coming from, but it's it's just still not what I want to see in the story. Yeah, I I agree. Um, are you guys liking Archie? Like, regular Archie? I'm not, I'm not reading, reading it. Reading yeah. it. I read, like, the first three issues when it was Fiona Staples um, and Mark Wade. I got to the episode right before you find out what the lipstick incident is. Oh, and then, the lipstick incident. I know, I know. That sounds it, scandalous. That was scandalous. Was it, was it scandalous? Uh, I mean, you saw how they broke up. So, like, you got to see that whole day leading to their breakup. Gotcha. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, it hurt. is it still consistently good? I, I love it. Yeah. I Woo, have... mercy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, it made my top list of the year. I really, really like it a lot. You have to start picking it back up. Um, and I think, because uh, it was Veronica Fish and Annie Wu took over for Fiona Staples. I don't know if they're flip-flopping or if Annie Wu just did one issue, but they're doing a very good job of keeping the tone with the with kind of consistent with Fiona, I think. Um, it's not super drastic in a change in artist. So I'm still liking it a lot. I love Annie Wu, so that would be good. <clears throat> Amanda, what about you? Did you... Yeah, um, Eggsy, I just want to say I love Sex Criminals, too, by the way. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, <laughs> <That's all laughs> mine, too. Uh, one of the... The one I picked was Scotty Young. There's certain oh. characters that he draws... Um, I pulled out books, for an example. Like, Spider-Man. Like, super cute. And, I don't know, then, like, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. There's other times where I'm like, I just, I don't care for it. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good choice, because he does, he does have very different, he, he has his, like, baby covers, and then he has his actual art. Like, I think that's the, the kind of art that he also uses in I Hate Fear Land. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah those, those are two totally different styles. Like, it's not like the cutesy, chibi look, you know, like, with all of the, mar the marble babies and stuff, too. Yeah. Like, the, what was the... No, it was like a four-part miniseries that he had, the Marvel versus... Yes, that it was like, ex I actually, I, I get them. I have them. That I have all next. four of them. <laughs> well, okay, I got the, it, they just released the hardcover, and I'm getting it next week, because I had a bunch of credit on um, on that website, so I can't wait. I actually heard it's really good, it's funny. I haven't even read it, but, uh, <laughs> but I have them. Like, uh, welcome to my life. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I I like that, Guardian, but I also really like I Hate Fairyland because I'm a like a junkie for that kind of crude comic, like crude cartoons. It was like yeah. Oz. He had that series. I had the. Oz oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. There was how many books were there? There was like or how many? There was like four, five. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty hefty. It's pretty hefty. I told you. So, including The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Marvelous Land of Oz, Ozma of Oz, Dorothy and the Wizard, Wizard in Oz, The Road to Oz, and The Emerald City of Oz, plus The Wonderful Wizard of Oz Sketchbook and Oz Primer. That's so what's included. Much Oz. <laughs> I think that was, like, maybe ten years of work. Ten years of Oz. <laughs> yeah, I have the first one, but that's it. It's, like, so expensive to keep up with. But I, I yeah, I love his art on that one, too. I would love to see him do have it, it, like an Alice in Wonderland. But that would actually be perfect. I think so too. I think he, he I think he has the ability to take these kind of worlds and um, 
you know, keep them fun, but also with adult content and stuff, too. You know, speaking so. of Scotty Young, I've heard him, I think he's been on the 11 o'clock comic uh, podcast a couple times. I'm pretty sure that's either that one or iFanboy, one or the other. And he seems like a really nice person. Like, I don't know, I, I, I don't think I'll have a chance to meet him at a con, but um, he just seems like a really down-to-earth. For someone whose, like, success has become really big throughout, like, these covers, um, mm -hmm. he just seems like he's, he's cool, cool dude. So do you guys want to, maybe now that we've made, you know, our own YouTube and, like, trying to make our own Twitter, maybe we can start tweeting. We'll have um, people that follow us choose our, start choosing our topic of the week, guys, or, you know, anyone that that's in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I think That'd be kind of cool. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, if anyone in the chat has an idea for next week, like put it in there, real yeah. quick, Zach. But I think we may have to start calling it a night because my throat can't take it anymore. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I um I'm gonna have to head out soon. Are you guys? I'm gonna yeah. head out too. Yeah. Yeah. Poor... It's, it's time for us to end it anyway. We've been <laughs> on here two yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm starving. <laughs> Well, I guess we should reiterate, so for anyone that's kind of just now tuning in, um, we are going to be moving this channel, uh, or, or this chat, to a different channel called um, Female Fanatic Force, um, which we'll still link back to Marty's comic book fanatics, because um, we owe him so much, and, you know, definitely, I would not have met any of you guys, <laughs> uh, except for Mercy, because I knew Mercy before, <laughs> and Millie, but the rest of you guys. So uh, you guys should definitely give us a follow on there. We're going to make a Twitter and then definitely start tweeting things from um, from that angle. But, yeah, guys, tune in on Fridays. It's going to be on that on that channel and probably still around 6.30. If we change it, we'll let you guys know. And hopefully we won't uh, encounter. We'll definitely need some guidance from Marty on how <laughs> to start doing these live chats and not encounter problems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, well, uh, do you guys want to start? Uh, so you guys can find me on Twitter, at the Cheska, or on YouTube, at Francesca Bologna. Are we just going to be moving pods? I think so. I think okay. so. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm gonna, I'll just say, like, a, again, just a, a huge thank you to Marty and Ray from Comic Book Fanatics and everybody, honestly, on that panel. Like, they all support us so much, and they talk about us. Um, Cammie from Reader1717 gave us a beautiful shout-out on her review of Faith, which we haven't talked about, but it's on its third printing, which is insane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it, I, I just think that, that everybody that is just talked to, you know, and Ian, who is in the chat, he is like our ride-or-die fan. He is so awesome. Yeah, he's, he's our so graphics guy. Cool. <laughs> just, it's so cool. So, I mean, I just, I'm so, so grateful to everybody that has been supporting this, you know, project and to everybody on the chat that gives up two hours on a Friday night to come and talk about comics. It's so fun. I love it. So thank you guys all. I'm Celia, Funkmaster Celia, everywhere online. And yeah. <laughs> Who's next? Who is next? Back to alphabetical order. <laughs> Mando. Mando, you want to go? Sure, I'll go. Um, you can find me at Nerdy Girl Collections on Instagram and here. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go next. Um, you can find me. I'm at Amanda Eggle, E G L E. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, my YouTube channel is also Amanda Eggle. I talk about comics. Yeah. Comics, <laughs> yeah. So I'm Nerd Lore. Uh, I just made a Twitter, so now I have a Twitter, and it's at nerdlore715, so now I have Twitter, and I'm nerdlore on Instagram and YouTube, and um, just a huge thank you to Marty and um, to Ray for getting us out there and everyone who shouts us out and tells people about our show. We're, like, really excited, and it's a lot of fun, and we just really appreciate all the support. Mm -hmm. You're here? <laughs> Millie, we miss you. Yes, I Millie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Millie. I'm Millie. I'm Millie. That's how we do it. I hope you're feeling better, Millie. Put some ice on your tooth. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> Maybe not ice. Maybe don't put mouth. ice on a tooth. That's making it worse. Don't follow my advice. Millie, ever. Millie, don't listen to her. Do not put ice on your tooth, whatever you do. <laughs> Yummy stuff. So you can or put a gel. Or a gel, yeah. Yeah, or a gel, there you go. 
<laughs> Who's last? Mercy, did you go? Nope, not yet. Okay. So, you guys can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Mercy's Little Show. You can also find me on Twitter, Mercy's Little Show, no W. Yay! Woohoo! Hi! We love you all. Bye! 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 Bye. <laughs> <laughs>